students so let us recall what we did yesterday already or in the previous class what we did was that we had this matrix A which was n cross n we took it to be symmetric fine in general what we wanted was that A s should be Hermitian for complex part we wanted it to be Hermitian so that A star is A and here it means that A transpose is A this is what we wanted fine. Now after that we defined we wanted to understand wanted to understand understand this what is this set x belonging to all R n such that x transpose A x is equal to say some constant c all right fine we wanted the curve what this curve is that was the idea for 2 cross 2 we try to understand fine I have not I just gave some examples to make you understand things. So to do things what we wanted was there was this notion of what was called a linear form. So what was a linear form take any vector so take any vector u in R n and x is my vector x 1, x 2, x n all right which gives me ideas from here that I want to look at solve a system in some sense fine or we want to find the solutions of this equation for a fixed c. So the, take any vector u then this u transpose x was called a linear form. Alright, that was one thing. Another thing we talked of was we only wanted only wanted those linear forms, we wanted only those linear forms which were linearly independent fine and by this what we wanted was that each of the linear forms they come from some vector u so we wanted that so a collection of a collection of linear forms a collection of linear forms say u1 transpose x till uk transpose x this is set to form or set to be linear form a linearly independent form or to form or to form a linearly independent collection of forms so now forms if the corresponding vectors so if the vectors u1 u2 uk is linearly independent all right fine so idea was that I wanted to collect linear forms. Why we want to collect linear forms? Let us try to understand that part. So initially we only wanted to look at x transpose a x is equal to c. But when we look at applications or anywhere else, what we basically get is we get expressions like the following. So let me just write the, the second degree, third degree you can think accordingly. So what we have is a x square plus 2 h x y plus b y square plus 2 g x plus 2 f y plus c equal to 0. This is what we look at generally when we look at second degree. Similarly for the third degree we some look at something else. So what we want is that I can write this part all right as a h h b times x y times x y fine. But there is this part which needs to be written so this I can write it as g f times x y plus c equal to 0 all right. So there is a notion of this g f that comes into play. So we need to take care of that part also is that okay. Now what does the linear form say? So the idea was that this is a symmetric matrix symmetric matrix and therefore this will imply that I can unitarily diagonalizable. So implies this matrix a h h b 
is unitarily or orthogonally diagonalizable fine so what do i mean is that i can get so i can write this matrix a as u d u star or since everything is real here if i assume then i can write it as u d u transpose u orthogonal fine that's the first thing that we have and then we had this notion of the linear form so the, what are the linear forms look at this matrix u or this u whatever you want to look at so write u transpose as u and v they are two vectors fine so u and v belong to r2 for us because i am looking at real orthogonal here you can go for complex also whatever you want to say fine and this we are multiplying x and y is that okay so let's recall what we did x transpose ax was x transpose u d u transpose of x which is same as u transpose x whole transpose d times u transpose x fine so i need to multiply this u transpose x look at u transpose x all right no so i didn't write u transpose like this i needed u transpose x itself itself like this all right so i didn't want this part all right what i wanted was define this vector uv as u transpose of xy all right so if you recall our linear forms were y1 y2 yn and those were nothing but yi was look at u all right or i think u transpose whatever it is just so it will be u transpose look at the ith row of that times this vector x fine this is what we had so do that yourself so if i write this as uv all right so then what i get is here uv here fine d here and u transpose v transpose here or u is just a linear form so it is just u itself fine so it is u and v itself because they are linear forms a straight line just a single expression fine so this you get it as lambda 1 times u square plus lambda 2 times v square where d is lambda 1 0 0 lambda 2 fine so this part is taken care of nicely what is more important than this is that you should be able to so we should be able to write this also in terms of uv so what we have done is that i have rewritten this as if you look at this part lambda 1 u1 square plus lambda 2 u2 square plus i still have fg and xy with me fine so i still have xy as well as u1 and u2 sorry u and v u and v square all right so i have got four variables now i have got u v as well as x and y so that makes my problem more difficult in some sense all right so what we do is that we want to replace x y also by u and v itself so we write this part as 2 of fg all right multiply by u multiply by u transpose xy i can do this fine now what is this this is nothing but look at our definition of uv this is what it is fine i should have written it correctly all right so let me rewrite that size i think this size is wrong it should be uv here u and v i should be all right fine so that you get the transpose and then this all right so i should have written like this fine so now i can replace this by uv is that okay once i have replaced this uv this part will give me another set of now values so i have to look at fg times u and so need to look at need to find alpha beta so that alpha beta is equal to fg times u is that okay i need to find this fine so i need to find alpha beta so that u times fg is there so f and g are known u is known so i want to find alpha beta fine that's the first thing that we need to do 
so that you can write this expression the previous expression as lambda 1 u square plus lambda 2 v square plus I can write now 2 alpha u plus 2 beta v plus some whatever it is. So, there is nothing here. So, plus c equal to 0 I can write like this fine that is the first thing I need to do to replace x y by u v and then now I can do this I can look at now. So, I can divide by whatever it is. So, all right. So, mod of lambda 1 square root u for u all right whatever it is. So, assume no, let us assume assume lambda 1 is positive. I do not know about lambda 2. So, what I am trying to do is that I want to use this to make it a complete square perfect square perfect square. So, in the sense that I want to write it as a square root of lambda 1 u 1 plus a square of this so that I can take care of this. So, if I want to do it it is 2 times a square root of lambda 1 u into alpha u divided by a square root of lambda 1 all right fine. So, if I just multiply by alpha here it is not u it is u itself u and alpha. So, let us look at a square root of lambda 1 a square root of lambda 1 cancels out I get 2 alpha u I get 2 alpha u. So, this square if I look at this gives me this gives me lambda 1 u a square plus 2 alpha u cancels out fine plus a square of this. So, what is this expression if you see nicely it is. So, I want this. So, let me write this. So, this cancels out this cancel 2 alpha u plus. So, this part comes from here. So, alpha upon a square root of lambda 1 whole square this is what I am looking at fine. Let us see this is square 2 times the square root of lambda 1 u upon this and alpha upon this. So, 2 alpha 1 this plus cancels out this plus alpha square by lambda 1 I can make this similarly similarly we can write this part lambda 2 v square plus 2 beta v in terms of. So, if lambda 2 is positive I can still do the same thing if lambda 2 is negative I can replace lambda 2 by minus of something and I still do it. So, again I will get similar expression here which will be a square root of mod of lambda 2 v plus alpha. So, it is beta upon mod of lambda 2. So, a square root of lambda 2 something like this if I do let us see a square of this. So, I will get lambda 2 v a square plus 2 v v lambda 2 will cancel out 2 beta v and something will come out all right. So, you can see that I can write this expression in terms of this all right fine. So, let us understand again we wanted to look at x transpose a x plus 2 f g times x plus c equal to 0 I want to look at this. First we write it in terms of lambda 1. So, we write it as lambda 1 u a square plus lambda 2 v a square plus 2 alpha u plus 2 beta v plus c equal to 0. Now, I subsume these two together and these two together and there will be some constant. So, I will now get something which will look like. So, lambda 1 or forget about lambda 1 it will look like some expression fine in u and constant fine plus or minus another square which will be in v and constant fine plus a new constant. Is that ok? So, this is what the expression that I am going to get fine and from here I want to say that I get all the results. So, let us take examples to understand it one by one nicely and proceed is that ok. So, what was the idea of linear form? The linear form idea was basically that you get this u which has all the dimensions. So, if I am looking at r 2 u has 2 columns if I have got r 3 I will get 3 of them and 4 of them if it is r 4 and so on fine. So, the linear form helped us to get this part 
and talk of the inverse and things like that so that I can get answers. Fine. So let's look at it. Principal axes are orthogonal. Principal axis where orthogonal lines. Is that okay? They were orthogonal lines. So what we have here is that we have the matrix U, which is U is orthogonal matrix. Orthogonal matrix. And what were the lines? The lines are the principal axis are nothing but principal axis are what are the principal axis? The linear forms. Linear forms. So in this example, if I look at in this example, the linear forms are u and v. Is that okay? Fine. So as u and v, v come from rows or oblique columns of u, they are orthogonal. All right. So the idea was to get the principal axis to be orthogonal lines. We are indeed getting orthogonal lines basically because I can orthogonality or can use orthogonal matrices to diagonalize the symmetric matrices. Is that okay? So everything we are able to do because of the matrix A being symmetric. Matrix A being symmetric means I have got eigenvectors, eigenvectors of A can be chosen to be orthogonal. So once I choose them to be orthogonal, I get U transpose X linear forms, forms that correspond to orthogonal lines and therefore I will get all the principal axes. Is that okay? Fine. So let us now take examples one by one and proceed to get our answers. Is that okay? So let me look at the examples that we have. Examples. So example. So I am starting with two dimension now. Fine. So I wrote so from f of x y which was our x y a h h b x y fine plus 2 f g x y plus c equal to 0. So, we are looking at f x y as that and we are looking at f x y is equal to 0. This is what we are looking at to get all the points of the curve that we need to understand fine. So, from here we are able to write it as some so, I have written in my notes as alpha. So, let me write alpha itself in place of lambda. So, I wrote alpha 1 u square plus alpha 2 v square plus d 1 of u plus d 2 of v plus c is equal to 0. I wrote it like this. Now, I have looked at different cases. So, case 1. All right. So, before I write this, I also have to assume that this vector, this matrix A H H B is not the 0 one. All right. If it is 0, then I have just one linear equation. So, this is equal to 0 implies F X Y is a linear form. All right. I do not want to look at the linear form. I want to look at the quadratic form. All right. Since I look at quadratic form, so I get a matrix like this. It is a symmetric matrix. So, I will get u and v is that I will get two linear forms which are linearly independent fine that is more important that I have indeed got two linear forms u and v alpha 1 alpha 2 could be 0 one of them could be 0 the other may not be or the other cannot be because diagonalizable and I am looking at this not 0 fine. So, therefore, this part also implies prove it yourself that at least one of one of alpha 1 or alpha 2 is not equal to 0. Because if both of them are 0, then this matrix will turn out to be 0 matrix. Fine. Alpha 1 is equal to 0 is equal to alpha 2 implies this matrix A H H B is a 0 matrix. Try that out yourself, prove it yourself. Fine. So, we are assuming this part. So, now let us look at different cases. Case 1. 
alpha 1 is 0 and alpha 2 is not 0. Fine, I have to be careful otherwise I will have problem. So, this implies what? I am assuming that alpha 1 is 0. Recall what is the determinant of the matrix A? Determinant of the matrix A is nothing but product of eigenvalues. So, therefore, this has to be 0. Is that okay? And what is the determinant of this matrix? Determinant of this matrix is also equal to A B minus H square. So, we need that. So, these two together will imply that A B minus H square is 0. Fine. So, you get this condition. So, let us rewrite this now. So, f of u v which was this for me f of u v is equal to 0 if and only if alpha 2 times v plus d 2 upon 2 alpha 2 whole square is equal to c 1 minus d 1 of u. Now, what is c 1? c 1 is a function of c and c d 2 and alpha 2. So, basically what we have done is, so I will give you for this example, for the next I will not do it. So, I will just explain you how I got this. For the rest you have to see it yourself. All right. So, let us look at this alpha 1 is 0. So, what I get is alpha 2 v square plus d 1 u plus d 2 of v plus c is 0. This implies I can divide throughout by alpha 2 or I can just take alpha 2 common. I get v a square plus d 1 upon alpha 2 u plus d 2 upon alpha 2 v plus c upon alpha 2 is 0. So, alpha 2 is common fine. So, I can just look at this part v and this here together. So, I get v plus d 2 upon 2 alpha 2 common this whole square. I have added this. So I have to subtract minus d 2 a square by 4 alpha 2 a square I have to do that plus d 1 upon alpha 2 u all right plus c upon alpha 2 this whole thing is 0 for me. Just look at this nicely fine. So, this gives me v a square which is v a square is there d 2 a square 4 alpha 2 which is cancels out. I get the second term which is 2 2 cancels out d 2 upon alpha 2 v which is also there. This part is taken care of d 1 upon alpha 2 u is here and c upon alpha 2 is here. So, you are writing this part fine alpha 2 was here, here also is alpha 2. So, I can take out alpha 2 one side v plus d 2 upon 2 alpha 2 whole square one side and the rest the other side. So, I can take the everything the other side. So, it is alpha 2 common again if you see here d 2 a square by 4 alpha 2 a square minus c upon alpha 2 they will come together alpha 2 alpha 2 cancels out fine look at this minus d 1 of u is this what you are going to get fine. So, this I took as my c 1 in my example fine. So, if my calculations are correct then c 1 is this and minus d 1 of u has, has come up as it is fine. So, you can see that everything is nice I have got my expressions here. So, I can now proceed further fine that is one thing. The other thing is that u and v are already perpendicular to me. So, I can even replace you can even write this as d 1 common all right c 1 upon d 1 minus u fine. Look at this I can write this as this also. So, what I see here is that if u is perpendicular to v then a shift of u by a constant all right I am just shifting the origin because u was a linear form. So, it went through 0 and it is perpendicular to v. So, v is this line suppose u was this line which was passing through the center from the 0 origin. Now, I am shifting it by some scalar. So, I will get here or here, but they will still be perpendicular because the slope remains the same. Is that okay? So, that is important that we have maintained the slope and hence orthogonality is there. Hence, I have got orthogonal axis with me fine. So, now I would like to use this to get my answers. <coughs> So, if d 1 is 0, I get alpha 2 times v plus d 2 upon 2 alpha 2 whole square is equal to c 1 fine. So, therefore, if so this will imply so if d 1 is 0, I get this equation and this implies what? This implies if c 1 and alpha 2 both are positive, then I have a solution. If c 1 is 0, then I get only one line 
all right so if c1 is 0 implies v plus d2 upon 2 alpha 2 is 0 i get same lines to a pair of lines which are same a pair of lines which are same fine is that okay I am just looking at this line. If C1 is not 0, if if C1 upon alpha 2 is positive, all right. So, if this is positive, so just divide here, take it minus here. So, if this is positive, or which is same thing as saying that C1 times alpha 2 is positive, this will imply that I can write this as V plus D2 upon 2 alpha 2 whole square minus some t a square is 0, where t a square is c 1 upon alpha 2, I can write like this. So, here I get a pair of lines, lines that are parallel, all right, the slope does not change, it is just the distance, a pair of parallel lines, pair of parallel lines, is that okay? Fine. So, you can see that I am able to make a statements one after the other using these ideas fine similarly now if c if d1 is so this was with d1 0 you could do things if c1 so this i assumed so if c1 upon alpha 2 is negative then we are saying that this square is a negative number negative number which has no solution which has no solution all right so i cannot get any point in r2 any line or any point in r2 which will satisfy that condition and hence i don't have any curve is that okay so if d1 is 0 then you go what i have if d1 is not 0 not 0 then i can divide by d1 so then i can write my things as alpha 2 times v plus d2 upon 2 alpha 2 whole squared is equal to d1 times c1 upon d1 minus u so, this represents nothing but, yeah, do you remember y a square is equal to 4 a x. So, you have some y a square here, I can, so I can write here equivalent to looking at this a square is equal to d 1 upon alpha 2 c 1 upon d 1 minus u. So, I get y a square is equal to 4 a x coming into play in some sense. I do not have the axis as x axis and y axis, my axis now are v plus d 2 upon 2 alpha 2 and c1 upon d1 minus u those are the two axes which are orthogonal so i get in this case i get all right a parabola fine so i would like you to look at different cases and then see that in different cases i am going to give, get different things fine i'll just give one more so so what we have seen is that so we looked at the case looked at the case alpha 1 was 0. So, if alpha 1 is not 0 and alpha 2 is not 0, then what you get is you will get alpha 1 times let me write I think I have written it somewhere I hope no I have not written it here all right. So, I will get something like u plus some d 1 square plus alpha 2 times v plus d 2 a square plus c 2 equal to 0. I do not know those numbers, but the idea is that our thing was alpha 1 times u a square plus alpha 2 times v a square plus 2. So, let me write it as 2 d 1 u plus 2 d 2 of v plus c 2 is equal to plus c equal to 0. Fine. Then from here, I will get to this part and hence, if alpha 1 is equal to alpha 2 and c 2 makes sense makes sense means we get c 2 such that I get a radius c 2 makes sense means c 2 gives rise rise to radius or if c 2 is negative fine if c 2 is negative I can go that side. So, I will get here alpha 1 times let me write I think let me do that u plus d 1 a square plus v plus d 2 a square is equal to 
minus C2 upon alpha 1, I am assuming this part. So, if this is positive, so this is negative implies that minus C2 upon alpha 1 is positive and therefore, I will get a circle. All right, And a circle with this and this as my point of intersection will give me the center and things like that. Fine. So, something I will get think about it. Fine. If they are not same and both are positive, then I will get an ellipse. So, if alpha 1 is not equal to alpha 2, but both positive will give me ellipse and if alpha 1 is not equal to alpha 2, alpha 2 and alpha 1, alpha 2 is negative will imply I will get a hyperbola. That is one thing. Also, you have to be careful this number, this coefficient that I am getting, this may be 0. All right. If C2 is 0, then I will not get a circle or an ellipse. That is very important. Whenever this is 0, I will get that this term is 0 and this term is 0. And therefore, or in the previous term also, if C2 is 0 here, so if C2 is 0, I will get that alpha 1 times u plus d1 whole square plus alpha 2 times v plus d2 square is 0. Fine. So, if alpha 1 into alpha 2 is positive, I will get that u plus d1 is 0 and v plus d2 is 0 and that will give me a intersection. I will give me two lines and a point of intersection I will get things like that. So, you have to be careful when you make a statements. When alpha 1, alpha 2 is negative, fine. Then I will get u plus d1 square minus v plus d2 square is 0. You can look at you will get a pair of straight lines and things like that. So, you have to be careful when you do these arguments. All right. Each case has to be taken up carefully and then appropriately understood. All right. So, I will just end the class here. In the next class, we will look at actual numbers and then do all the work. Is that okay? So, that is all.